Bitcoin exchanges are kind of the most centralized aspect of Bitcoin. Think of them as the on-ramps and off-ramps into and out of the Bitcoin economy. And when you're operating in an environment where you are frequently interacting with the rest of the economy, the exchanges are rather important. Um, since October of last year, I, I get paid in Bitcoin uh, almost entirely. And I do most of my spending in Bitcoin almost entirely. So I have less and less and less interaction with exchanges. Um, and so also I don't really pay attention to the price of Bitcoin as much as I used to because um, I buy things in Bitcoin. So exchanges are less important the more you operate within the Bitcoin economy. One of the things that people don't realize is that Bitcoin is not simply absorbing the US economy and converting things. So you could buy it with dollars, now you could buy it with Bitcoin. That's very, very small. What's much, much bigger is the possibility of creating a completely new economy and the economic activity that happens within. Let me give you a parallel. If I told you in 1997, if I asked you the question, how many fax and telephone lines will the internet replace? Now you look back at that question today, and you think that's a ridiculous question. That makes no sense whatsoever, because the whole point of the internet isn't replacing faxes. We're not enjoying the internet because now we can fax better. But if you looked at the conversation that was happening then, people were writing 30-page reports on whether AT&T's long-distance business and the fax machine business were threatened primarily by the internet, and counting how many offices and businesses were converting to email, and whether that would threaten the post office. Looking at Bitcoin as what it replaces e-commerce stores is missing the point. Uh, we're building completely new economic activity here. So what happens with these exchanges? They're centralized, they're at the edges of the network, and they're where Bitcoin touches traditional money. Uh, the slowest parts of traditional money, the most regulated parts of traditional money. For regulators, exchanges are the nail for which they have a really good hammer, so they hammer on them, because that's all they know. They can't touch Bitcoin itself, they can touch the exchanges. Uh, for crooks, the opportunity to find a centralized part of Bitcoin where people concentrate their money, which isn't under the control of the distributed algorithm, but is in the hands of one individual organization, is a tremendous opportunity. So the exchange failures you've seen are situations where people took their money off the Bitcoin network, gave them to an exchange, and gave them control over that money. What happens when you give someone control over your money? They steal it. It's the oldest story in the book. It's like, here, I've got a suitcase full of $100,000. Would you mind holding this for, you for a few minutes? I'm just going to go get a cup of coffee. <laughs> um, now, you will be extremely surprised if you come back and that suitcase is still there. Um, that would be the exception. Most of the time, it won't be there when you come back. And so, exchanges are like that. If you give someone your Bitcoin keys and you say, here's my Bitcoin, could you hold on to it for a second? Yeah, don't be surprised if you come back and it's not there. Decentralized exchanges going. Excellent question. So we're beginning the to problem, see the problem of front running and hyper concentration. Yeah, um, decentralized exchanges are gradually growing. They're not an easy problem to solve because you still need pools of liquidity and you still need ways to concentrate uh, the non-Bitcoin currency. So even if you have a distributed Bitcoin exchange, you still need ways to exchange the non-Bitcoin. And that stuff tends to be hard to transfer, it tends to be hard to cross borders with it, it tends to be um, very controlled, um, it doesn't move very fast, and it has a lot of fees. All of the things that Bitcoin solves, when you touch them with an exchange, you end up reintroducing all of those problems. So it's not easy to make decentralized exchanges. 